And now, the, the title of this, this panel is The Future of GMOs. And because of some changes in the biotech industry strategy and technology, I'm going to be doing something different for the first time in 23 years. Oh, and we're going to be reframing the debate once again. So it's not our focus now at IRT is to continue the momentum that we've created, but also the biotech industry now is touting gene editing. And gene editing is cheap. To get something genetically engineered, price of dinner. Then, of course, to get it to the market costs more. But there is now the ability for them to dream up genetically engineered ecosystems, where a farmer can send off data, soil samples, and they can have customized genetically engineered soil organisms, sprays which change the genetic expression of the crop, insects which are genetically engineered, and in the future, those that can deposit viruses which will genetically engineer in the field, and you can still grow a non-GMO crop in the middle of that and call it non-GMO. But it goes beyond that, because everything with DNA is being targeted in this global gene rush. It is like a gold rush into the genome, from bacteria to bees, from algae to animals, from fungus to flowers. And if we don't stop it, tens of thousands of labs over, the, over this generation will be introducing new gene-edited organisms into the environment. Now there's two things we need to know about that. First of all is, they corrupt the gene pool forever. We don't have a technology to clean up the gene pool. It becomes irreversible, self-propagating genetic pollution. So all living beings and all future generations will inherit the folly of this generation if they replace nature. And I use that term very specifically, eliminating the products of the billions of years of evolution and replacing it with designer organisms designed for greater profit and control by the companies that we know and have learned to disrespect. The second aspect of genetic engineering is that the most common result is surprise side effects. Now you take thousands or 100,000 organisms with all of their interactions in the environment and the propensity to have side effects. What are the chances of a cataclysm? What are the chances of a virus? What are the chances of horrible results? As you multiply the risk by the number of organisms and inter interactions, you increase the probability for uncertainty.